Hi, I'm Jeff Alpin, The Big Game Hunter, and this is No BS Job Search Advice on Blab.im. I like to spend most days at noon Eastern time taking visits from people who are interested in looking for work, answering questions about their job search, trying to help them play bigger. Because at the end of the day, for most of you, job hunting seems to be a lot harder than it needs to be. I think, frankly, what occurs is most of you make the mistake that believing that the skills needed to do a job are the same as the skills needed to find the job. And thus, you go into interviews ill-prepared, you send out resumes that are amateurish, that don't do a good enough job selling yourself and your credentials. You know, even salary negotiations, you play like a baby. So that's where my blab here, all the videos I've created for YouTube, it's over 1,600 videos now on YouTube about job search and hiring, where all my content is designed to help you. So before I go into this, I just want to say that uh, if you have a question and you're not able to appear on Blab with me, email it to me at thebiggamehunter at gmail.com. In the subject line, put the this, this sentence, I have a question for you. And I'll do my best to get to them uh, the next time I do a blab. So I'm going to pause for a second. So let's continue. I've received a couple of questions from people, and I want to speak to them. And here's the first one. Uh, this was sent to me, and it says very simply, how should I react to a job application that states preference will be given to women and visible minorities. All right. I love that one. Women and visible minorities. So I guess what they're saying is if you decree yourself to be black, but you appear to be as white as I am, they're not going to consider you a minority group member, even though you declare yourself to be African-American. So here's what I think. How should you respond to an application where it's presented that way? Easily. You ignore it. You take the time to sell and promote yourself. You take the time, instead of reacting to a, a sentence like that, what you do is you make a case for yourself to be chosen to be interviewed. And once interviewed, you take the time to be prepared to answer the question that's on every employer's mind and it's one that they never ask. And the question is, in a world of almost infinite choice, why should I choose you? That really is the question that they're almost all as asking. They want to get the sense that you know, you're the best person that they can find. And you're just regurgitating a bunch of facts. If that's all you're doing, you're making a tactical and a strategic mistake. Every interview you go on has that meta question behind it. And just to repeat it, in a world of almost infinite choice, why should I choose you? You need to be prepared to answer that. Now, I normally will encourage people to go into, into two approaches. The first one is right off the bat, I want you to learn about the job. So at the time the phone rings and they're going to do a phone interview with you, or you're sitting down in the chair with the person that is going to interview you, I want you to start the process by saying something like, hey, thanks for making time or thanks for reaching out to me if it's a phone interview. And continuing by saying, you know, I recall the position description or I spoke with, and you mentioned the recruiter's name, and they gave me a brief description, but I want to get your take on it. Could you tell me about the job as you see it and what I can do to help? And you do that before anyone asks you a question. Anyone asks you a question. So you do that so you can hear the latest thinking about the job and do it before they get rolling. Because once they, they start asking you questions, the ball's in their court and you can't reverse it. So you start off by finding out what their th current thinking is about the job, which may be different than a job listing that you've seen. Once you have that, you know what the target is and thus can 
uh, know that every question they ask is trying to find out how you fit that requirement. So then you talk about what you've done that relates to what matters to them instead of just talking about what you've done. Secondly, at the point where they start doing the tell me about yourself question, instead of going through the typical answer, you start off with the typical answer. Just make sure it's less than 30 seconds. And then you continue by saying, but I'm sure you've heard a lot of very good people say similar things to you so far. But what makes me different, and then you talk about a situation where you did exactly what they're going to ask you to do, or you were brought on board to solve a, a critical problem and you solved it and how you went about doing it. Again, keep your answers concise because you want to be moving from the typical tell me about yourself question to this part quickly so that this way they get a flavor for who you are and your successes or your previous successes. So that's my advice about how to deal with a question like that. I've got one more for today that I think is terrific, and let me lay it out for you. Hi, Jeff. I have a question for you. Last year, I interviewed with a company and was informed a month later that the job was given to an internal employee. A month later, another hiring manager from the same company contacted me and said he was referred to my LinkedIn page from his wife and wanted to know if I'd be interested in an interview and a day of testing. Uh, I'm sorry, applying for a managerial position. Let me read that again. He was... uh, referred to his LinkedIn page by his wife and wanted to know if he'd be interested in applying for a managerial position. The person passed the phone screen, the first and second interviews, and a day of testing, but the employer has not made an offer as of yet. They, the HR department contacts me weekly, which lets me know this has been going on for a while, stating they're working out the particulars, which makes me hopeful, but still no offer as of yet. I'm starting to think that the employer is stringing me along, hoping to find the cheaper candidate, of course. Uh, I'm, sit, I'm feeling anxious and frustrated. So I'm thinking that if they decide to send me a rejection email, I would express Uh, how disappointed I am to experience this with them for a second time. I also thought about copying a contact at the professional organization that we're both affiliated with on the email so that they're aware of how this uh, employer has handled the process. Do you have any other advice on how to handle this situation? So let me just come back here. Good. So that's the problem that we have to deal with. And uh, folks, if you're listening, if you have a suggestion, why don't you write it in the message area? I'd be curious. I'm going to do this. No answers so far, so let me dive back in. They are stringing you along. It's a classic thing that employers do. In the recruiting business, there are three jokes. The first one is how can a job applicant How can you tell a job applicant is lying to you? And the answer is their lips are moving. The same question is asked of employers with the same answer. The same question is asked of third-party recruiters, again, with the same answer. This firm is stalling. They are interviewing other people. Or someone's on vacation or traveling. But they would have told you that already. Instead, they're stringing you along. And... Now, I get the idea this has been going on for a while because you said each week you talk to HR as though more than one week has gone by. So let's not kid ourselves. They're not prepared to make an offer. And when they do, you know, they're going to expect you to talk about the same money you've spoken with all the time, even though you may have another offer for more money. Now, what can you do? That's the big question. I would not go out of my way to speak ill of them uh, by contacting the association that both of you are members of. There's nothing in it for you. So you harm them, woo, they'll get over it, you'll get over it. So how do you flush out what's going on? Well, I'm a believer that there's there's a message in their method. 
By that I mean they're telling you through their behavior that they're not sold on you. Because if they were, they'd make an offer to you, right? So rather than kid yourself, just know that you know the likelihood is you're not getting an offer. If you do, that'd be fabulous. But they would say more than simply what they're saying now, in my opinion. So you take the time uh, to do one last communication with them that says something to the effect of, um, haven't heard in a few weeks. My assumption is that you're not interested. Am I correct in my assumption? Yes. Great. Thank you for the courtesy of letting me know. Out of curiosity, where do I need to strengthen my skills? Listen to what they have to say and go from there. When all is said and done, at the end of the day, you have a responsibility and they have a responsibility. Their responsibility is to pick out the best person for their organization and they keep shopping until they go, enough, I'm tired of talking to these people. Ah, it's awful, awful. So they go on that way, and then from there, what you do is you're always marketing yourself. You're always out there trying to sell yourself until such time as you have a suitable offer and beyond. You want them to fall in love with you because, after all, no love, no money, no honey. So make them fall in love with you every step along the way. Every firm you meet with, have them walk out of the meeting believing you are the best choice imaginable. And then from there, you'll know exactly what to do. I'm Jeff Alpin. If you have a question, email me at the big, Jeff Alpin at TheBigGameHunter.us. Uh, forward your resume there. Be happy to try helping. And if we're not connected on LinkedIn, send a connection request at LinkedIn.com forward slash IN forward slash TheBigGameHunter. And lastly, if you're interested in having me coach you throughout your job search, visit my website, which is thebiggamehunter.us. Click the tab on the top that says, have your job search questions answered, and go exploring. You know, there's great information all designed to help you. Hope you have a great day. Take care.